Hello again! In the previous video we talked about Einstein's box. In it we saw how a radioactive element placed at the left of the box emitted a photon to the right. This transferred linear momentum to the box that moved to the left. Now, I have a question for you and I will give you time to think about it. What is wrong with this? Do you think the box would really move that way? The first impulse is applied on the left side of the box. Then the whole box moves to the left, but that's not possible. Nothing can travel faster than light, so how can it be possible that the right side of the box is moving instantaneously after the emission of the photon? That violates the speed limit in the universe. Let us solve this problem with a modified version of Einstein's box. Let's consider a box that only has two sides. In other words, let's consider just two walls. The wall on the left with a radioactive element that emits a photon to the right. Because both walls are not in contact, once the photon is emitted, the wall on the left will move and not stop. While the photon is going to the right, the wall on the right side will remain at rest after the photon is absorbed, the wall on the right will move, and will move indefinitely. At the beginning, linear momentum is zero, and at the end, has to be also zero. The initial distance between the walls, we can call it L. The mass of each wall is M. When the photon is emitted, because of conservation of mass, the wall on the left should have a tiny little bit less mass, delta m. The wall will then have a mass m sub 1 equal to m minus delta m and a velocity b sub 1. The photon travels during a time t naught with the momentum p equals to e over c. When the photon is absorbed on the wall on the right, that wall will start to move with a mass m2 equals to m plus delta m. So, this is the Situation, we have these two walls, the wall on the left, let's call it wall number one, the one on the right, let's call it wall number two. Both of them initially have the same mass, mass m. There's some momentum here on the photon that is traveling to the right when it's emitted, and the photon tr needs a time t naught to go from wall one to wall two. The initial separation between both walls is L. Now, when the photon is emitted, the wall, on, the wall number one will have a mass m minus delta m, and because of conservation of linear momentum, we'll have that it will gain a momentum m1 v1 going to the left, which in magnitude is the same as the momentum of the photon p, which is e over c, that we know from electromagnetism. Now, from here we can write, for example, that e over c is going to be m minus delta m times v1. Now, the wall on the right, wall 2, has a mass m2 equals to m plus delta m when it, it absorbs the photon, and then we know that from conservation of momentum, m2 v2 is equal to that same momentum that carries the photon, which is E over C. And that, if we do the same here, we can write that E over C is equal to m plus that delta, tiny delta m, v2. Now, with that said, let's write the position of the center of mass, which if the origin is here where wall 1 is, should be right at the center. But let's, let's calculate what is the center of mass right before. Remember that this is the sum of x sub i, m sub i, over the sum of m sub i. Initially, we only have two elements, the two walls. The first one is at the origin, so this is going to be 0 plus, the second one is at the position of plus L, so this is going to be Lm divided by mass 1 plus mass 2 is the same in both cases, so this is going to be L over 2. So as we expected, the center of mass is right there in between both walls. That 
has to be conserved. So now let's calculate what is the center of mass of the system after the emission of that photon at the end of the process. So we have that the x of the center of mass is going to be the position of wall 2. Well, the position is changing in time, so now we have to write that position as velocity multiplied by time. So because it's going to the left, it's going to be minus v1 t. That's the position multiplied by the mass, which in this case is going to be m1. Now for the wall number 2, we have m, sorry, plus the mass and the position, which is going to be the initial position is l plus whatever it's moving to the right. So after it absorbs the photon, so it's going to be that velocity v2 multiplied by the time elapsed. But now the photon impacts the wall at the time t is zero, so it has to be t minus t sub zero, t minus t naught, final, any time minus the initial time. So this is position of one times its mass, position of two times its mass, divided by the total mass, which is m1 plus m2. Now, let's Let's continue with this. Uh, and we know that this has to be equal to L over 2. So now this, we have this equation here. And let's play a little bit with that equation here. So uh, I can write that uh, uh, more explicitly. Minus V1 T. This M1 is M plus delta M plus M2. This is L plus V2 parenthesis T minus T naught. All of this divided by m1, which is m minus delta m, plus m2, which is m plus delta m, and that is equals to L over 2. Some things will cancel here. For example, I will cancel this delta m with that delta m. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is use this result here. Then you know that m minus delta m multiplied by v1 is just the momentum of the photon, which is E over C. Look, this is just what I have here. M, sorry, mm, this was a minus. And m, m minus delta m, which was coming from that m1 multiplied by v1, that's P, which is E over C. I will write that, and here also I will substitute that m2 by m plus delta m. So here I have minus that time t multiplied by e over c. Then I have plus m2, which is m plus delta m, multiplied by l plus v2 parenthesis t minus t naught, divided by just 2m. And this is equals to L over 2. Now, um, I'm going to do the same. I have here M plus delta M multiplied by L plus M plus delta M multiplied by V2, which is just the momentum of the photon, which is E over C. So let's simplify that a little bit and write it here. I have that, that L over 2 is going to be equals to negative e t over c on one hand then I have plus that m plus delta m multiplying l plus e over c parenthesis t minus t naught and all of this is divided by 2 times m Okay, uh, let me just separate this, not get confused into that. So, okay, now this E over C times T is going to cancel this negative E over C times T. And look that I will have here E over C multiplied by T naught, but T naught is a time of travel of the photon, which I can write because it's traveling at the speed of light. The speed of light is the distance travel divided by the time. So T naught is going to be uh, L over C. So I will rewrite that. Uh, I just cancel these two with that other two and I have that L is equals to this term. Cancels this term here. And what I have is th this mass, I can put it here. And I have M 
plus delta m l plus oh sorry minus t naught e over c multiplied by t naught by t naught is l over c oh by the way there's an l here i just forgot l times m l times delta m this ml is canceling that ml again this cancels that one and i'm approaching the result i have that delta ml minus e l over c squared is equal to zero the l cancels i solve for delta m and i have that delta m is equal to e over c squared which is that equation we were looking for the relationship between the energy and the delta m so there is a energy traveling to the right and there's an associated mass to that energy so the mass initial mass is transformed into energy here and then at the end is transformed again into mass well this is another derivation of the relationship between the mass and the energy in this example mass is transformed into energy and then energy is transformed into mass the photon transfers momentum to the wall on the left and then to the wall on the right. But the linear momentum of the system is zero at all times, and the center of mass of the system is unchanged. Now, with this, you should be able to calculate, for example, how much the sun slims down each second. So remember, E is equals to mc squared, and may the science be with you.